You're listening to the world famous White Roof Radio, Wolfcast number 645, recorded August 1st. Wow, August 1st. 2018. Uh, we started this thing 13 years ago. Holy shit. Uh, tonight's episode, of course, as always, brought to you by OutMotoring.com, CravenSpeed.com, and MotoringStripes.com. Because blank is boring. MotoringStripes.com. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. Let's get started. Yep. Hey, everybody. It's DB in Arizona with another episode of White Roof Radio. World famous, by the way. World famous, bitches. That's us. White Roof Radio. We are world famous. 645 times. Six, 645 times we have gathered underneath the white roof over, as of today, the day we're recording, over the last 13 years. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, brother. That's an amazing thing. That still marks White Roof Radio as one of the oldest podcasts on the planet. We're one of the first. We're definitely in the first thousand podcasts ever created. And the fact that we're still recording, I'll be only twice a month, that's still pretty amazing, I think. So congratulations. We're still featured over in, in uh, Automotive on iTunes. I looked at that not long ago. It's like, there we are on the front page. Nice. <laughs> that's really fun. And that's, that's just because I think we're so consistent. I mean, there well, are other shows that are listed on there that haven't done a show in more than a year. Oh, right. Yeah, we never go more than a month. Yep. Yeah, and eventually it'd, it'd be nice if we get back to twice a month. It'd be nice if we get back to weekly, but that's going to be a stretch. So If all of us would either stop traveling or stay out of the hospital. If, if Gabe would stop showing off the fact that he's on in-flight Wi-Fi over the Atlantic <laughs> Ocean, and if Todd would stop getting Ebola... <laughs> if you actually, Todd told us a really good story about his uh, revisit to the hospital. He's much better now, right, Todd? Todd's much better now. Yeah. That's over there in the Black Roof Radio. If you guys are interested, uh, we show we show you a picture of Todd's gall, gallbladder. No, we don't. But you no. know, <laughs> if you're interested, send me an email. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll put it on my Instagram and lose all of my followers at once. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, and make sure that that Instagram post goes to your Twitter and your Facebook too. <laughs> If you're going to gross everybody out, I mean, why screw around? Gross everybody out. I, me- I did that when I cut my finger off back in, uh, in 2003. Uh-huh. Um, I, I cut the tip of my thumb off with, okay. a, with a mat knife. And, yeah. did you, um, didn't you just post that on Flickr in 2003? Well, that was on my blog way, way back oh, when. Oh, yeah, yeah, way back then when, yeah, Todd's Month's blog, yeah. Yep, it was on my blog. And I, I, it wasn't just there. You had to click through to get it. Oh, and yeah. it's a warning, these pictures are graphic, but you can click through to, you know, get the crime scene photographs, if you will. <laughs> it's probably still there. Yeah, I, I won't go look for it. If you guys want to find that, go find it your damn selves. I'm not going to look. It was pretty, it was pretty gruesome, the, my, my stitched up. Oh, yeah. I, you know, now I think about it, I remember I do remember seeing that, and it would gross me out entirely too much. <laughs> It and you had to click through to do it, too. You oh, yeah, but it was 2003. It's just like the internet was still pretty new in 2003. It's like, oh, this would be kind of cool. Well, let's see. Oh, man. <laughs> Dang. I don't oh, need that. Yeah. We're not talking about illnesses and whatnot tonight. We're going to talk about Mini Cooper stuff, actually, for reals. I had stuff happen to me in my Mini. Todd's had stuff happen to his Mini as well. We're going to discuss that, plus, you know, Probably make fun of Gabe some more just because he's not here and he's got in flight Wi Fi flying over the Atlantic. Uh, Why not? Why not? You know, we can talk about mini USA sales being down too. That's always good to get Todd really revved up. So that's a possibility. Keep that one. We're just going to put a little tack in that one for right now. And come back I'd, to it. I'd like to say I'm I'm older and calmer now than I used to be, but <laughs> you just got to pick the day for me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because, uh, we're, yeah, let the expletives fly at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, we could talk about MTTS, too. We'll talk a little about MTTS. I don't know anything about MTTS stuff, but I heard from our man Scotty um, and the pictures that I've seen from you guys posting all over the Internet. Um, but we might discuss MTTS, too, because why not? We'll see what happens. We're going to get to all that here in just a minute. Let's talk to you, remind you about the one of the fine sponsors here under the white roof, our friends over at Outmotoring, Outmotoring.com, who will be getting money from me very soon because... My mini is loud. My mini is noisy because I have that mini connected thing, right? The screen with the nav and all the bells and whistles stuff. Every chance my car gets, it makes a sound. If my car gets an eyelash stuck in the headlight, it makes a sound and puts a warning on the screen. 
I swear to God. Um, and today I get the full screen clacks and warning that my brakes are down to whatever, 20% or something. Uh, so I will be going over to outmotoring.com to order up some replacement brake parts very, very soon because Aaron sells replacement brake, par- brake parts. If I want my EBC green stuff pads, Aaron sells them. If I want stock pads, Aaron's got those too, plus a full line of rotors and even like the super hot pads and rotor setups for you race car guys. You can get all this stuff over dot motoring, right? Not just like... Not and you're going like, to need a sensor too. And I'm going to need a sensor too, exactly. So you can get all that stuff. And if I needed... Uh, this is a new uh, uh, thread I saw in one of the Facebook Mini Cooper groups. Somebody had lost the that front trim piece on an R56. You know, the one that always falls off. Yeah, I, Aaron sells that. I think he sells it. I need to check, but I think he sells it in plain black, and I think he thinks, and I think he sells it ready to paint. For those of you who want to get crazy and do body colored um, molding, which you really shouldn't do unless you have pepper white, because otherwise it looks weird. Or unless you have an arrow kit, right, Todd? Isn't that <laughs> yes, the rule? That is the rule. Only pepper white or arrow kit can you do body colored. Otherwise, or all black. You can do it on all black. You can do it on an all black car too. That's true. Because it's yep. already all black and it gives you the right. nice shiny black. But if you've got like a chili red, no, no. If you have a blue car, no, it doesn't work. It just doesn't. Really sorry. Anyway, all those parts are available. Plus a whole lot more at outmotoring.com. Click over there. I don't want you to forget. Uh, you can get points now. That's a new thing. Um, Aaron will help you figure out which Mini Cooper model you own if you get confused by the R50, R52, R56, R59, R61 stuff. Aaron's going to hook you up. Make sure you get the right parts. Um, Aaron is the best supporter of Mini Cooper Clubs across the United States, period. Nobody supports Mini Cooper Clubs better than OutMotoring.com, including Mini USA. Aaron does a better job of supporting clubs than Mini USA does, which is amazing. If you've ever got a gift, you, you ever heard that they're giving away you know, a gift certificate to OutMotoring.com at one of the events you went to, that's your proof right there. Uh, free shipping on most orders over $195. 100% happiness, guaranteed. It's right there on the webpage. And don't forget... Full line of hitches and things to use to pull things with your Mini Cooper available as well over at minidomore.com. I want you guys to go over to outmotoring.com, check all that out. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter so you get your 5% discount code. So you get a 5% discount code, you spend 195 bucks, which I'm going to end up doing with brake parts, and shipping's free. Done and done. All thanks to our good pal, our buddy, our man Aaron over at outmotoring, outmotoring.com. Mini performance, speed, and style. It's outmotoring.com. Uh, I'm not going to put in news music this week. Okay, because, yeah, we're just going to talk. I'm going to put in I'm going to put in Eastbound and Down. <laughs> you, you think I, I can, uh, you can buy a windshield from anyone that I've worked out? You can't buy a windshield. What happens to your windshield, brother? So I'm, uh, I'm driving back from a, a client meeting today. Uh-huh. And um, <clears throat> just casually getting on, you know, getting off the highway on an on-ramp, mm-hmm. or an off-ramp, and I hear this... I hear this tap. I hear it's just like, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I look down, and there's an eight-inch crack across the corner of my windshield. Dude! Just and I Just go, like that? Well, that's weird. I didn't hear anything hit. I just heard it crack. I just heard it go crack. Yeah. And um, I'm like, well, that's strange. And it's all the way at the edge in the corner. So I'm thinking, man, when I get back, I mean, I'm going to look at this. And this this seems like a stress crack. But it's weird because, you know, I was just going gently around the corner. Right. Gently. For me in a JCW, right? Which, which is which pretty means bad. you're doing less than 80 miles an hour, anyway. Right, exactly. So, uh, and then it cracks, and I'm thinking, okay, crossing my fingers that it's a stress crack all the way from the edge, and there's no point of impact. And so, I uh, get pull into the driveway, get out of the car, look at it, dude. There is like a giant, like rock chip out of like something hit just at the right point. Really. Toward just maybe a half an inch or so from the very edge of the windshield. Okay. Hit at the right point, you know, spidered, and then immediately cracked like eight inches into wow. the windshield. Wow. It's like, son no, of don't, a... Don't you have windshield coverage on your car insurance? Yeah, I'm sure I do. I have no idea how much the, the windshield's going to cost. If and you have insurance, I've, it's going to cost you whatever your deductible is. Yeah, I've got a $100 yeah, uh, so it's going to cost you 100 bucks. In Arizona, it doesn't cost us anything. It's it's mandatory. Arizona state law states that all insurance carriers have to provide windshields insurance. Really? And, yeah, and I don't think I have a deductible on mine. I don't remember. It covers all the wind. It covers all the glass in my car. 
I, I remember in my 03, way back when, this is 15 years ago now, Yeah. Uh, I had something hit the windshield, pretty much put a hole in it. And, I remember that. Yep, I had that happen, and then within... And then like, this, and the sunroof exploded. Yeah, the sunroof exploded, and then I had two insurance claims within three months. Right. And then my insurance tells me, you know, I had State Farm at the time, my insurance tells me, oh, if you have another claim after this, we're going to cancel your insurance. And I'm like, what the, because I used it? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that was their policy. That yeah, you use your insurance and we're going to cancel you. It's like, I think oh Bob God. Parr worked for that insurance company. I'm not sure. So anyway, yeah, I was like, well, maybe I'll look into it. And I went, I don't Just talk to your it. guys and they'll hook you up. I mean, you're going to put mini glass in anyway. You're not going to, not like you're going to call Safe Light or anything like that and have them come put a windscreen in your house. No. Right? Do it. Yeah, have the dealer do it. And your insurance will cover it anyway. Yeah. But so, it's just a pain in the ass that I have to deal with it. It's know? really not a pain in the ass. You're at your dealer four days a week anyway for at least three <laughs> or four hours. And it That's only true. takes, and it only takes a guy like an hour and a half to replace the windshield. And here's the good part, too, is I had pain on the, the whole ass. other side, on the passenger side, I had a, a chip out of it. That they were going to repair, but it was going to cost me like I don't know fifty bucks to repair. Yeah. And they'd fill it, and it was it was a chip enough to where you could see it from the inside. Yeah. But they looked at it and said, "Oh no, we can fill this, right? Yeah. We can we can fix this. You don't have to replace it." Well, now I get a whole new windshield. There you go. For six more freaking months while I have the car. Hey, hey. <laughs> easy, easy. It's going to help. Another, it's going to help your resale value. And I don't know what I'm going to do. At the end of that, of the know, end of that lease, you still haven't decided. No, I, we're we're thinking all over the board, you know, with something like a some sort of family vehicle, and then I get the Roadster. Ah, okay. And I get carte blanche to do with the Roadster what I want, which means like uh, manic, full manic, race car, Lower manic rate. stage three. Yeah, all, make it spit fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all of the things. Lower it. Yeah, but then again, I'm th- I'm thinking. You know, I'm thinking the same thing I did when I sold the GP. I want something more comfortable. And what did I do? I go buy a JCW with with coilovers and yeah. Stuff. I really don't think you want something more comfortable. <laughs> I here's one thing the, I the, do. The car that you're gonna want, Todd, is the ta- is a car that you don't want to spend the money on yet, and it's gonna be like an Aston Martin DB9. Yeah. Right. Or like one of the big Jags. Well, and yeah, and here's the here's the thing is whatever I get, yeah. I've realized. Driving around the the way I drive, I have to have a fast car. Yeah, I have to have a car faster than most other cars on the Get, road. Dude, you know what? Stop screwing around. I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna buy. You ready? Mm-hmm. Just stop screwing around. Buy an M5. <laughs> Done. Yeah, that's that's a possibility. I could buy a used M5 if I wanted to spend five grand on a valve job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or you could always buy like an M, one of the MZ trucks. The they did the Z8 as an M, I think, Z8 yeah. M, which was pretty sick. Um, but yeah, same thing. I think they had to remove the motor to change the oil. So yeah. I, I don't think that's a car you actually want. But an M5 would be pretty badass so for reals. Yeah, I, except I, for the I, except for the maintenance on them. You know, I want something fast. I know that, um, and I, I'm not I sure. Of, I want to go. I kind of like the idea of doing crazy stuff to the Roadster and then getting a family car for the lady friend. Yeah, yeah. Right, like a, like a nice Volvo SUV or hell, exactly. even even a Countryman, possibly. We're seriously, seriously looking at the XC40. Right, which is a really nice uh, little SUV. And and the reason I'm looking at over the Countryman... It's priced is, about the same, isn't it, the XC40? Yeah, they're right at about forty grand. Right. Okay. Now, maybe a little more than a Countryman. Here's the thing, though. I could go get a Countryman, and I'll probably lease this as a business car, okay, just right. for business purposes, right? Sure. So here's the here's the difference between a Countryman, and this is important for Mini Cooper listeners. The difference between a Countryman, equivalently priced, let's just call it forty thousand dollars, forty grand. Day. Let's just call it forty grand. It's not hard to do on a Countryman, and an a, 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 a Volvo XC40. XC40 starts at thirty three two. I think a Countryman starts at roughly the same price. Right, so I've equipped them out the way I want them, about forty grand. You know, with the Apple yeah, yeah. Card. But but everything's done. You've spent forty thousand dollars. Got it. Here's the thing: if you put twenty five hundred dollars down on a lease, yeah. okay, the Mini Cooper lease payment is going to be more than a hundred dollars more a month than the Volvo. Really? Because the residual value of the Volvo is so much higher than the Countryman. Really? Yep, yep. And I know, uh, you know, car companies mess with this and they make their own. You know, they make up their own information. They can make it whatever they want. But 
you know, minis have like a, a table. They already know here's yeah. what the residual value on this car is going to be. Right. Here's what your lease, you know, this is what it's going to be. Right. And it's like a hundred dollars more a month. And you wow. know, we talked about it and I went, why would I pay a hundred dollars more a month to drive a mini when I could get more features? Right. The, the Volvo has self driving features. Right. And all the extra safety features too. Exactly. Right. right. Like the, the, and, and that crazy robotic cruise control and yep. all the things. Right. Yep. Yeah, and the XC, I think the XC40 is a good-looking little SUV. It is. I think it's one of the better-looking cars out there. I think it yeah. looks as good or better than the Countryman. I don't know if it looks better than the Countryman because it's still, it's still got the weird taillights that I'm not a huge fan of. It makes it look like a Nissan Leaf or something um, But because I still think the Countryman's really sharp-looking. Um, but I think that, that Volvo is really nice, too. I'd drive that. Yeah. Well, That's a Volvo. means you can drive it till the wheels fall off if exactly. you decide to keep it. Right. Yeah, I'll probably just lease it for two or three years. It doesn't yeah. really matter. There you go. And then you can get your Audi R8 or Aston Martin DB9. <laughs> See, that's the other thing I struggle with, too, is like I'm getting older and then I realize I want to enjoy a car, uh-huh. but I only want to enjoy it so much because I drive maybe 6,000 miles a year. Right. Okay. I just don't drive it enough to right. justify spending 70, that kind of money. 80 grand. Yeah. Of- I kind of I kind of like the idea of you going maybe not full race car, but kind of race car on the roadster yeah so uh, that, that's definitely a possibility that we may do the xc40 and then i taste take and the only problem with that the only problem with that is if you're using the roadster as a company car yeah i don't think you've got the storage space to haul stuff around like you do in your car now or even with it the is, gp yeah it is a little limited on right. that because i mean I it's got a good size boot to be sure but for the amount of stuff you have to carry you'd almost have to take the passenger seat out yeah it's it it would be a challenge but i think i could make it work so especially if it's Spitfire, because you put a manic stage three tune on it <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> and that's exactly what happens with that manic stage three tune by the way yeah you get a catalyst you know downpipe and yeah. you put the stage three and it shoots fire out the it back it shoots fire out the back uh, like three minis in Arizona do that because Jerry put the that stage three kit on it, yeah. and the, he only did it because of spits fire. <laughs> we have a couple here, and um, uh, one was backed up. You know, they they just put this kit on it, and um, it was backed up to the curb at the dealer. Yeah, and the exhaust was, you know, it, it was backed up over this curb, and there was like decorative rock. Okay. 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 On the ground, and it was maybe I don't know four six inches away from the exhaust, uh-huh. and when the exhaust popped, it moved all the rocks out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so much pressure coming out of that, all the rocks just moved, just parted like the Red Sea. You know. Wow. <laughs> nice. Nice. Cool. So I had problems with my car too. Yep. Yep. I I saw that on. The, and the, and I was really concerned because. I have a 2013 R59. That is the 2013 Mini Cooper Roadster. Uh, it's the S version, although because it's the Roadster, it has the better engine than the first-gen Mini Cooper S. Uh, less, It's less prone to issues, but still prone to issues nonetheless. So I was really worried. I'm driving home from work, and it just completely just crapped out on me on the freeway. Right, just completely stopped running. And all the warning lights are going off. It's doing all the things. It, wasn't even, it wouldn't even run in limp mode. Right, it just would not run at all. And I, and Which, I find, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say when you when you first posted that, it led me to believe it's not a turbo because when the turbo goes, usually you'll lose boost, but the car will still run. Right. Okay? You, you run in a Cooper mode. Boost. Right. Yeah, you just get boost. Right. You just don't, don't have any boost. Um, but it wouldn't run at all. So I'm going. Oh, this is going to be really bad, really bad. And I, you know, long uh, to make a short story long, uh, I'm stuck on the side of the freeway, 115 degree temperatures. I was, I, I swear to God, I was sick for the entire week from exposure because I was outside for like five hours. It was ridiculous. Anyway, um, get it into the shop finally. Jerry tears it apart. Literally tears it apart. The entire interior of that car has to be dismantled to get to the parts that he had to do, because what happened is I essentially ran out of fuel. So the fuel filter housing had cracked, which caused the car to not be able to actually pick up any fuel from the tank. Yeah, so, no pressure to be able to pump the gas out exactly. of it. Exactly. Or, or put all the fuel on the right side of the tank or something. I didn't actually understand that. But all I know is that because the fuel filter uh, housing cracked, uh, I ran out of fuel. And so Jerry was able to get that fixed for me. And I did could oil. Have worse. Could have been worse. Did an oil change, and I got to put my extended warranty to the test. It worked flawlessly. I was very pleased. Six hundred dollar repair that I only had to pay five hundred and forty one dollars for, because I had to pay sales tax on the part. It was a two hundred dollar part. 
It's like, boom, done. I had all the work done for like a hundred bucks, including an oil change. Nice. So, yeah, but I do have to do brakes. So I got to start saving up for that. And I need tires. And I don't know what to do for tires because I always think I want to get really hot tires because, you know, Mini Cooper. But then I look at my drive and like you drive 6,000 miles a year, but you're driving very spirited for 6,000 miles. I'm driving 12,000 miles a year and it's all at 20 miles an hour. Well, and you know what? I, there and was I'm thinking I'm just going, I'm thinking about honestly, just going back to Costco and I put those Costco tires on Roxy ones or the, the Michelin's, I think. Yeah. I'm just going to get a set of those. You know, I was, uh, it, it's interesting. And I think it was on Jalopnik or one of the automotive sites fairly recently talked about tires yeah. and it talked specifically about if you live in the Southwest where it's really hot and it gave right. Phoenix as an example of one of those places. Right how you should choose tires differently than you do in other parts of the country right. because of the heat and the exposure they get. Right. And I didn't read into it because I'm like, well, I don't live in Phoenix. So, you know, but if you look it up, I'm sure there's something that, that talks about that, that, you know, the heat wears tires a lot faster. I mean, it, it breaks some down faster than others and depending on what they're rated. But, uh, yeah, look into that and let us know what you, yeah. What you yeah. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. I, I, uh, of course, I'm going to go back to Discount Tire, you know, America's Tire, because those guys always take really good care of me. But I'm definitely not going to get my the same tires. I always get the Kumo uh, ASXs. Yeah. I'm not going to get those this time because I do want something that is going to last a little bit longer and probably has a little bit more comfort to it. Yeah, and I, you know what? I, I would say in your your situation, try not to spend more than 100 to $115, dollars a tire. Yeah, I I'll, I always budget five hundred dollars for wow. tires. And I think that's pretty reasonable, even with 17s. Yeah. So, you know, because you can get a lot of tire now for 120 bucks on a 17-inch wheel. And I'm not going to put 18s on it. I don't care what Cape says. I'm not going to put 18s on it. Um, so, And I don't need Michelin Pilot Super Sports. Which is what I have on my... Uh, I would love to have those tires. But they're $165 each, right? Yeah. And I swear by them. I had them on the GP. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've had them on my JCW now for a year and a half. Yeah. I love those tires, with the exception of I just discovered a bubble in my rear right tire. Yikes. <laughs> it's very small. It, it's very small. And I'm kind of like, all right, if I go do a track day, I'm going to have to get new tires. But right. if I don't, I can probably limp along. Until or you I put, take it to disc. Did, where did, you, did you have the dealer put those tires on? or did you get Yeah, them yeah. I just limp along until I put my, my all seasons for winter back yeah. on. And then maybe just turn the car in with the all seasons on it. Oh, well, there you day. go. Well, I'm looking at got, I'm looking at discount tire right now, and I haven't looked at tires for a while. But yeah. they have the Michelin Pilot Sport AS3, yeah, for only 157 dollars each, and that's on the wrong size. I didn't even punch in the right side. That's on the 205 45s, and I don't want 205 45s. I want 205 50s. Yeah, I put the, the 205 45s on. Yeah. 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 Okay. Maybe anyway, one hundred fifty-seven dollars. It's almost right in budget. Yeah, because you don't and that's a and that's a forty-five thousand mile tire. Do you have a lot of potholes and things where you I have are? a few potholes? I got a few rough chunks of road. Um, you know, uh, we don't call them. They're not frost heaves out here. It's just heat heaves, I guess. Yeah, but like, I wouldn't worry about the low profile tires in that out there. You know. Yeah, I, I, but it's I would a little rougher ride. But you know. uh, yeah, I mean, I drive to mom and dad's four times a year, so that's uh, what six hundred miles round trip. But even those roads are pretty good. You know, because Arizona actually spends money on those roads, and we yeah. don't have snow or frost or freezing temperatures where I drive, so we don't have to worry about it. Anyway, I'll keep yeah. you guys posted on that. But brake jobs coming up very soon, and I've gotten to the point now, and also because of my living arrangement, is I'm going to have to pay to have the brakes done. Yeah, and that kind of and that kind of annoys me. But I, I also need the fluid swapped anyway, so I'll yeah. just. I'm just going to order all the parts, and I'll take it to Jerry. Jerry will charge me like an hour and a half, two hours of labor, plus he'll change the oil for me or the, the fluid, and I need to do it all at once. You know? Done and done. And if I do tires first, I can have them put on the alignment rack at the same time. Right? Cry once, cry hard. <laughs> Thank you, well, Mr. Benham. That's the other thing, too, is you got to look at it and, and go. You probably just need pads. You, you probably don't. No, need front rotors are done. They're, they're, really? Yeah, yeah, front rotors are done. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I don't I don't know any history about this car, and I oh, bought it at, I bought it at roughly seventy thousand miles. So I, <clears throat> I, the rotors 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 are actually cheaper than pads 
It's yep, yep. cheaper to buy rotors. And I'm not buying fancy rotors. The last rotors I bought were like the Brembo Blanks. And they're, I don't know, $25 each or something. I don't remember. They're inexpensive. 50 bucks a piece or something. Not that much compared to brake pads. Brake pads are going to me, cost me, well, it's actually about the same, about 50 bucks a, uh, 50 bucks a corner for the EBC Greens. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't, and I don't even know if I'm going to stick with EBC Greens because I've been hearing a lot of bad things about the latest batch of EBC Greens or of EBC brake pads in general. From like a lot of people, so I'm just going. Oh, maybe I'll switch. I don't know. I'm just as long as I don't put stock pads on, I don't care. Yeah, there's a lot of good alternatives out there. There's a lot of them. I'm gonna poke around some more. I got some time. No rush. Anyway, so uh, in case you're wondering what it's like to run out of gas in a Mini Cooper, just you know, <laughs> put a crack in your fuel filter and done and done. Everything else checked out though, so I'm pretty happy about that. Awesome. I'm glad it wasn't worse. Yeah, me too. I'm just one thing in this, but this car I just still can't get over is the damn. Uh, the damn throttle lag. Oh, man. It's, yeah, it's really I, I blame bad. the automatic for that. It, it, dude, it's automatic. And it doesn't matter if I'm in, if I'm in uh, sport shift mode or if I'm in full sport mode. That makes it less noticeable. Because I have the exact same car as you. In yeah, fact, but it, you have a stick shift. Same year. I think ours is a 13. Is yours a 13? Yeah, so we're the same year. Our cars are yep. exactly the same, just different color. Yeah, I have a 13S, and the only thing I have on my car that you don't is the JCW exhaust, which really doesn't doesn't nope. change anything. No, nope. oh, you also have a manual transmission. Yeah, but I have a manual transmission to it, and right. I never feel like the car is is doggy or anything. No, like of course that. not. I, love- I I never felt that in in um, in uh, in Bruce Meyer 56 Cooper. Uh, I didn't feel. I don't remember feeling this in the JCW Roadster we drove, the Motor Fall Company car that Gabe should have bought. Yeah. Dummy. Um, <laughs> but I do remember you complaining about it. We had that one, two, what was it two? I think it was a 2008 or 2009 R56S that we drove up from Florida to Boston. It had automatic. Yeah, and awful. that thing had some really gnarly throttle, uh, really slow throttle. Yeah, response. but that thing threw codes about three times. <laughs> and that's true. That car was a pile of crap. We, we learned that that car was a, uh, a take back from Mini. That <laughs> yeah. they're like something was wrong with it, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. So yeah. what do we do? We give it to the White Wolf Radio guys. So there you go. Take the states. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were really good at that. Uh, anyway, so that's what's going on with my car. So luckily, it wasn't anything major. Uh, and luckily, I do have a good extended warranty, good for another 50,000 miles on my car. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, I really, say drive the car until your warranty's done and then get rid of it. <laughs> that, that's a, the, You know what? Oddly enough, that's about how long it's going to take me to pay it off. It's going to be right about the same time. Well, and, then, and then it's going to be like, okay, that'll be perfect. And it's going to be at that time where I'm going to want a car with back seats again. It's going to be at that time when I want something a little bit more practical, right? And I'll be over the whole top down, top down thing. Um, yeah. But, I mean, for now, I love this car. It's just me, so pff, I don't need anything else. I, hey, wish, I, I, could, I wish I could have the top down right now. If it's 115 degrees, it's a little a little spicy for that. Okay, I'm going to make you I'm gonna make you ill because it's been in the 70s here. Shut up. It's, it's, everybody has nicer weather than we do right now. But this is the time of the year when we don't get nice weather. Yeah. Right? That's Arizona. We're not we, supposed to. We're, it's supposed to be ridiculously hot and humid here. But. Everybody else I've been talking to, I was talking to somebody in Canada yesterday. They're up in Ottawa. It's been like in the 80s with 80% humidity. Oh. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty brutal for Canada. That's pretty horrible. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, in Arizona, it's been, what, 115? Well, with and then. 40% humidity. It's Man. either that or you're living in California and the entire state's on fire now. So. Well, there's that. Speaking of, you heard about our friends uh, Norm and Jesse, right? Yeah, that's terrible. They lost their house in the fire, so hard they, to go out to the guys. They really did. Um, that really sucks um, that, that, that that happened. Last I heard, though, is the lower garage has uh, remained unscathed, so they still have their Mini Cooper collection, from what I understand. I the last so. thing that I read. Minus, minus the two that were in the house. Mm, yeah, minus two that were upstairs, yeah. So that really sucks. Car fire. Uh, yeah. California's yeah, on that's fire. Horrible. They were saying that like a thousand homes have been yeah, lost. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you never know anybody that, that that's that's had something like that happen to them, right? Yeah. And, 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 you know, this time actually now I know somebody and you know somebody and everybody else listening knows somebody because <laughs> everybody, everybody knows who Norm is, yep. uh, Norm and Jesse. So it's just it's really sad when shit like that happens. Um, I hope everything's OK and I hope they are able to get everything back on track as quickly as possible. Yep. You know, and maybe look at a house in Arizona, Norm. I don't know. Just a thought. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere a little bit more populous, you know, get closer to the city, perhaps someplace oh. where there's less trees. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mini Takes the States just finished up. 
It did, and uh, yeah, I, we, we I, missed. I wasn't. The, I, I, w- I was so close on Thursday just to say screw work and go totally postal and just throw my keys at the place and leave and drive to Durango for a couple days, right? And just do the last two days. I was like, you can't see me pushing my fingers together really closely, but I was this close to doing that because I'm following everybody, all the East Coast people I'm following. It looks like they had a blast compared to the West Coast people. And even the West Coast people look like they had a good time, but it looked like a huge event. Yeah, it was a. I, I think the final numbers were like three thousand, thirty five hundred. Some people yeah. participated in the whole thing. Yeah, um, it's there were some some light days. It seemed like you know some of the places were were more well attended than others. But you know, mm-hmm. I was watch. I was of course following from my hospital room. <laughs> oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, I, it it happened at the perfectly wrong time for me. <laughs> right. But uh, but anyway, yeah, it looked like everybody had a good time. And, you know, it, it appears I was wrong. I predicted this would be the last one. Yeah. But I, on the last day, um, whoever was up there, and it was whether Tom Selkowski or, or uh, Thomas Felbermayer, one of them said, well, we'll see you in 2020. Right. So right. and that came direct from so many people. So everybody's like, oh, we're going to do this again in 2020. So so, guess, so in 2020, uh, Todd, just have it ready. Mark my words. This will be the last one. Yes, exactly. I'm so predicting it now. I'm, I'm predicting it now two years in advance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it did look like because it was like kind of going, oh man, I kind of miss having being hanging around with that many cars, you know. It was, it and was then my my year. Facebook is filled with um, my, my memories of many takes the states gone by. Well, right, so I go yeah. through and it's and then not only that, but then um, Amviv eight the Ocho. So that picture came up again this week. It's just like yeah. That well, you know what's rad. funny about following along the the mini takes the states people on on Facebook and so different social media. Yeah, let's is it, it looks more like I swear I saw more pictures of the food people were eating and the beers they were drinking than the cars. Because yes, that's what it really was. It's a road trip. It's an eating road trip. Yes, that's because all people do. That's it's because so, the Mini Cooper people are involved, so it's food. Food stop to food stop to yes. food stop. This is what we have for breakfast. This is what we have. You know, stuff yeah. that's great. For lunch we went here for ice cream right here's a nice brewery we were at you know right yeah that's i <laughs> i have to agree and also and i posted this on twitter my question is why were there so many people standing on minis <laughs> like every picture i saw it seemed like there was somebody standing on top of a mini to take a picture yeah that was pretty bad just like Whoa. And we're not talking standing on the sunroof we're talking standing on the car. yeah like on the on the bonnet standing on the bonnet and yeah. was it just me, or it, it did seem like there were a lot of older cars, like a, a higher percentage? Yes, I agree. There were some. There were some new ones. You saw some F fifty sixes and some. Yeah, F6 saw country. saw some F cars. Saw some new countrymen. But it would appear to me the bulk of it was still R fifty sixes, and there was even quite a few, from what I could tell, R fifty and R fifty threes. I uh, I communicated with a couple of people who were on the trip. Yeah. You know, during the trip, and I wanted to know these are people who'd been on all of them yeah. to this point, and I kind of wanted to go. What was your sense this year? Over previous years, and I got, well, it I wouldn't call it epic. Okay, that was that was the response I got. Is, is yeah, uh, I, I, that's a response I got from Scotty too. One person was I wouldn't say it was epic like some of the other ones have been, but it was it was still fun. And but what this person said was, here's the problem: is all the in air quotes here cool kids decided to stay home this year. <laughs> I didn't think there was a finger pointing at me. Uh-huh. But, uh, but there, there were a lot of people who didn't go who've been, yeah. you know. There, there were quite a few. Um, I heard the summer thing. I heard there's a, not really confusion, but some confusion because there was uh, no, like, host hotel. So everybody, it wasn't really more, it was made it more of an adventure, I suppose, trying to make sure you're hooked up with everybody and found where everybody yeah. was. Yeah. Um, and the whole DIY aspect of it, I guess, on the East Coast, a lot of the dealers really stepped up, coming from the East, uh, yeah. and put on some really amazing events. That's what I heard from my guy on the street. Um, but I didn't hear anything from the people coming from Pacific Northwest. I haven't even heard about the Craven Speed Party, but I can only imagine it was completely epic. It was It was pretty great. We had um, one of our... Uh, oh, your guy was up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah one yeah. of uh, one the salespeople from our dealer went, he drove up to Oregon and did the whole West coast and, and he had a blast. He'd never been before. This was excellent. Only, so he really had nothing to compare it to. And he said he was ready to turn around and do it all over again. Yeah. I was following his, uh, I was following his adventures on the Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. I think he had a good time. He went through a set of breaks. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> on the trip. Okay. But, you know, he has a JCW like me, and his is, like, tuned out the wazoo to, like... Right, it spits fire and all the things. Yeah, he's got, like, 400 horsepower. It's ridiculous. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he goes through tires, like, I don't know, he gets a new set of tires every two weeks. Or... Oh, wow. No, okay. I'm kidding, but <laughs> just about. That's like, that's, like, track day kind of stuff right there. Yeah. Anyway, for those of you who went, thanks for sharing with us. Um, we're really bummed that we couldn't go this year. Todd's not. Todd's still angry um, because, well, he just is. And... Um, <laughs> I was in pain. <laughs> yeah, Todd was in pain. He I was, was on I was on fentanyl for two days, man. Yeah, nothing but just like an IV of fentanyl. No water, no food, just fentanyl. Nothing else. Um, you can hear about that over at the Patreon. Um, but yeah, so look, everybody had a great time. So good on you. And uh, now, I'm, and now I'm seeing all the posts. I've been seeing the posts this week. Of everybody's like, oh, I'm home. Right, home. What do I do now? <laughs> so it seems like some things never change. Yes. All right, let's remind you guys about one of the other fine sponsors here underneath the White Roof. Our friends over at Craven Speed, we just mentioned them. These guys are awesome. If you uh, happen to attend the Craven Speed MTTS kickoff party, uh, good for you, good on you, because I would imagine that it was probably the best party of the entire trip, no matter what side you came from. Um, those guys know how it's done. They've been going, Craven, I, I saw on um, LinkedIn today, uh, Kellen's been working at Craven Speed for 12 years. So Craven Speed's been around almost as long as White Roof Radio. That's amazing to me. One of the OG sponsors here underneath the white roof, motoringfile.com as well. And they've really they've really grown quite a bit. I mean, of course, they've got all the really cool stuff for your mini, right? The the cool short shift kit, shift knobs, the platypus mount so you don't have to drill holes in your front bumper. Uh, the dipstick, of course, that's awesome. The Gemini mount for all the things so you don't have to you know hold your phone or your GPS. But they've branched out into other brands, Audis, BMWs, Buicks, Land Rovers, Lincolns, uh, Suzuki. They got Suzuki parts. They're making Suzuki parts now, or parts for Suzuki's. Toyota's Volkswagen. So really, it doesn't matter what car you have in your driveway. There's a good chance you can put some really cool Craven Speed stuff on it. So click over to CravenSpeed.com and check it out. Don't forget they have a rad return policy. They really do. It's right there at the top of the page. It's rad. Uh, free domestic shipping now, which is super awesome as well. And all the cool things, right? <clears throat> Go check them out. And then, of course, our friends over at Craven Speed. CravenSpeed.com. Go over there and see them, please. Oh, that was weird. Uh, what else you got, brother? Um, that is all I've got. I'm sorry. I'm still, you know, recovering. You're from still recovering. Yeah, and I'm still recovering, recovering from old. <laughs> recovering from being old. <laughs> yeah, there are any more teenagers now? So I need a trip to. I need a trip to Vegas. You know, you don't you have a trip for Vegas planned? Soon. Yeah, Soon. keep. Don't tell anybody because hey, I'm. I'm gonna. Uh, every time I go to Vegas, I'm gonna give a shout out to this. I love staying at Aria, and um, you, you've got to go if next time you're in Vegas. Which is go probably going to be sometime when next time you go. Yeah, yeah. When you, when you go to Vegas, you got to go to the Aria, and uh, one of my favorite restaurants and bars is uh, Bardot Brasserie there. Okay. And go sit at the bar, go for happy hour, yeah. and ask for Eric, the bartender. Okay. And tell him, tell Eric that Todd from White Roof Radio sent you. And uh, he'll treat you really well. He's a great guy, really good bartender, one of the best in the best in the city, in my opinion. Wow! So uh, <clears throat> I love those guys at Bardot at the Aria. Okay. okay. And fantastic food, you know, a French twist um, to to awesome food. Yeah. So, All yep, right. Just had to give a shout out there. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks, sir. Um, really quick, I keep begging Gabe to join us uh, because he has his new company card, the JCW Countryman. Um, I'm hoping to get him actually on a microphone sometime in the near future, so if you know, just Gabe and I, so he can talk about the new JCW Countryman a little bit for us, which I think would be pretty exciting. I'm really excited to hear about that car. Anyway, so yeah, we'll have Gabe on really soon. Uh, we'll get Chad back as well. Chad's been busy installing a new dyno or Detroit Tuned. If you're not following Detroit Tuned uh, on the Facebook, go follow Detroit Tuned on Facebook and you can see all the cool stuff that they're doing. They dynoed uh, Marzo's car. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like 83 horsepower. It's like, I was impressed. I didn't think it had that many, right? Good old Lindy. Good old Lindy. 
83 horsepower. Oh, yeah. And they dynoed a vet and one of Chad's minis, and I think they download, they dynoed the, uh, G, the, 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 the convertible Cabrio. Cabrio, Vol- yeah. The, yeah, the Volkswagen Cabrio. Anyway, so they've been getting that all dialed in and tuned up, and like Chad mentioned in the last show, he's been super busy. So we'll get him on as soon as he's available, of course. We love Chad. So do you, Detroit Tune, DetroitTune.com. Uh, and don't forget, MotoringStripes.com. Uh, for those of you who maybe didn't get any MTTS stuff, Todd, you still have a little bit of stock of that left? There is, literally, there's a hand full of the limited edition badges left nice um, i was going to post about this but i'll let our white roof radio listeners know first i literally have a handful of these left and when they're sold out they'll they'll show up as sold out i've got a good inventory process there good so if you're interested motoringstripes.com there you go get over there check it out because you know blank is boring and i know summer's almost over but really the best thing that todd does over at motoring stripes is the white roof radio sunroof delete kit and what it does you it puts you know he sends you vinyl for 100 bucks you put it over your sunroof make sure air conditioning actually work which is really nice just you know go over there and punch that in on the contact form he'll get one sent over to you just tell him what color you need he'll send it out you install it, piece of cake and your air conditioning will miraculously start working so much better there's even one with a union jack on there now so you can go oh, it's nice. for sale. 150 but hey well, it's a little bit extra but i like just the solid color that's just me yeah, yeah i need one for my car <laughs> <laughs> see what i did there <laughs> don't make me curse on this here radio <laughs> <laughs> yes please don't curse we've had a curse free show this episode don't forget to gang uh if you are of the patreon subscribers new black roof radio went up uh, probably a couple days ago you can go check that out if you're <laughs> interested you want to hear what we talk about when we're not talking about mini coopers you have to tune into black roof radio that's over at patreon.com forward slash white roof radio uh a buck a show whatever you like get you in i'm coming up with trying to come up with something really cool that i can do for you guys as soon as i can get everybody to make a show on a more regular basis but i want to do something cool maybe a t-shirt to start maybe hats like club hats i think might be really pretty badass um i'm thinking of something i'm hoping to have an answer for you on that very soon too so keep an eye out Anyway, we're done for the week. So as usual, I do make, I do like to make that funny clicking sound. And then I say, questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead, click back over to whiteroofradio.com. You can also email us, feedback at whiteroofradio.com. But until next week, gang, this is DB. I'm done. Cheers. Well, and it's it's interesting too because now people are starting to it's it's taken forever, but people with Amazon Alexa and Siri are starting to figure out all they have to do is say, "Hey Siri, play White Roof Radio." Yeah, I don't. I actually want to. I'm waiting for Libsyn. Libsyn's supposed to be working on a skill builder because uh, I've tried building the skill myself, and you have to be a serious coder to do that. And I just like no, I just don't have time for that. So mm-hmm. right now we get played through TuneIn which is not ideal. I'd right. rather it come directly from Libsyn. Right. Right. Because Brian said, hey, dude, it works like this. And it's like, oh, because tune in. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, at least, or at least we're there. If you ask Siri to do it, it just plays it through the podcast app. Oh, that's nice. But it does it. And um, it either... So what, with the, Apple, with the Apple speaker pod thing? Just on my phone. Really? Yep. I've never actually done that. Hey, Siri. Play White Roof Radio. Oh, look at that. Did it do it? Well, I can't tell. Well, because it's not... Hang on. She thought it took her a while. Sorry, I couldn't find White Roof Radio. Hmm. The Mini Cooper podcast tell fault because it's not in your music. Hmm. Uh, that's interesting. It didn't open the podcast. Didn't open a podcast for me. It, mm. it knew what to look for because it said White Roof Radio, the Mini Cooper podcast, but it didn't actually, you know, and I am subscribed in the podcast app. I have two shows in the podcast app, and it's the bike show on White Roof Radio. Hmm. Interesting. interesting. I, wonder if you, I wonder if you were to say play White Roof Radio in the podcast app, or you could actually have it do it in... Um, hey, Siri. The play the podcast White Roof Radio. Now playing White Roof Radio.
the Mini Cooper Podcast. There you go. You're There's listening stuff. to the world famous White Roof Radio with cast number 644, recorded July 11th. You just have to know it's a podcast. Yeah, you just have to say the podcast. Oh, that's kind of a cool trick, though.